So this is this is a, across all crypto. You think all crypto is going to zero, not just Bitcoin? Well, yeah. Well, what's the difference between them? Well, different cryptocurrencies have different technologies, different goals, different usabilities. Well, not really. I mean, they have different names. I'll give you that. Uh, and they have different pictures on the coins. Uh, but look, yeah, some of them have different uses. But so what? I mean, none of. I mean, there's thirteen thousand of these things. I mean, 13,000. There's not 13,000 different uses. There's a lot of overlap. A lot of them are pretty much, you know, carbon copies of the ones that already exist. And, you know, none of these cryptocurrencies have anything proprietary. There's no, like, patent. Anybody can just create one that's identical to it. It's all open source, right? I mean, anybody can do it. Um, and that's the problem because everybody wants to pretend that they're scarce. There's nothing scarce about Bitcoin if there's 13,000 other cryptocurrencies that compete with Bitcoin. Look at this, uh, what, Shiba Inu? What's it called again? Uh, Shiba Inu. Sh yeah, I mean, that came out of nowhere. And now look at it. I mean, you just you can start <laughs> one of these, you know, from scratch. That's that. No one even heard of that cryptocurrency when the year began. Now look at it. It's worth, what is it, $30 billion, $40 billion out of nowhere? And so if that can happen, how is Bitcoin scarce when you could do that, you know, and, and, and an infinite number of times? I mean, there's 13,000 of these things now. I mean, by the end of the year, there'll probably be 15,000. If the bubble keeps on inflating, maybe the, the supply will double next year. There'll be 30,000 of them. I mean, th th there's no difference. They just keep creating them. Yeah, I, I agree that it, there's a lot of volatility, a lot of speculation, a lot of potential risk behind it. You have to be smart when you do that. But, you know, we'll, well, I guess we'll see what happens if, if blockchain stays on and if there's any future technology with blockchain. And I'm glad you gave your opinions because what I always say is you need to hear both sides. You got to hear from both people's opinions. So I'm very glad that you were able to educate our audience on your opinion. Well, what, so I, what, I thank I you mean, for what that. Makes you th I mean, if you think Bitcoin has value... What is the value of Bitcoin? Because no one has been able to convince me it has any value. Sure. Well, if I have, I have gold bars. Now, if I want to go travel around the world and I want to spend my money in India and I have gold, it's very difficult for me to do that. It's very difficult for me to travel around the world with gold in my pockets and do that versus me transporting something like a cryptocurrency is very easy. It's on my phone. It's very easy for me to do it off the grid. And it's very easy for me to now make these type of transactions. We have writers here for our team that are overseas. They couldn't accept PayPal. They couldn't accept some other sort of payment. And so what we did was we sent them cryptocurrency. And now within five seconds, we had spent hours. Yes if not days, trying to figure out how to pay them. I, I, I agree with you that it is easy to transport Bitcoin because you're transporting nothing. And so when you're transporting nothing, it doesn't cost a lot well, of I'm money. Well, I'm transporting my phone, right? Bitcoin is on my phone. Right. Cryptocurrency is on my phone. And it's, it's, it, there's, well, right. there's something but there. You could actually do the same thing. If you like blockchain technology, you can do the exact same thing with a cryptocurrency that's backed by gold or something real. So I can I can have gold in a right. vault somewhere and my ownership can be registered on the blockchain and I can have a cryptocurrency that represents a fractional ownership Absolutely. interest in a bar of gold or multiple bars of gold. And I can just as easily and just as inexpensively, probably more inexpensively and even quicker and easier, I can transfer my ownership of that gold anywhere in the world through my cell phone. So you exactly. can have cryptocurrencies backed by gold. You can have them backed by silver. You can have them backed by whatever you want. They can be backed by coffee. They can be backed uh, by, by, by copper. They can be backed by oil. You could back it by real estate. You could back it by stocks. You could back crypto with anything. It makes no sense to back it by nothing. Right. It seems to me that a cryptocurrency that is backed by something real will always have value and will be more appealing than a cryptocurrency that's backed by nothing. Because to me, the difference is real currency versus fiat. Real currency is backed by gold. Fiat currency is backed by nothing. So Bitcoin is fiat, right? It's a currency backed by nothing. All you have is faith and confidence. But if you have a cryptocurrency backed by gold, then what gives the cryptocurrency value is the gold that backs it up. You don't have to have confidence. You just need to know that there's gold there.
but you've just showed that you believe in the blockchain because there are stable coins which are backed pegged by gold and in order to do that you have to use the blockchain yes, but you in order don't to have build to use the stable bitcoin. coins you don't need bitcoin you don't have to use bitcoin but 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 the bitcoin you're talking about the value behind bitcoin but bit, gold but, teams but when i own bitcoin i don't own the blockchain i don't own anything but that token so my point is that everything you like about bitcoin you can have all that with a cryptocurrency backed by gold, but then you would have all the positive attributes of gold and you combine that with all the positive attributes of Bitcoin. But the problem with Bitcoin is when there's no underlying value to Bitcoin, you can transfer it around until the price collapses because people realize it has no value because simply being able to transfer it doesn't give it value if ultimately what you're transferring has no value. Well, it takes time, effort, and labor to mine an ounce of gold, correct? Yes. Just like that, it takes effort to mine Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies through different types of work, which you have to show through your computing power on your computer or by staking certain cryptocurrencies. So it's a different type of work. Well, just because and something young people, requires... Well, young people... Well, just because but, something but, yeah. requires work doesn't automatically mean it has value. You have to produce something that people want. I mean, for example, if I hired somebody to dig a big ditch, right? And then when they were finished digging the ditch, I paid them more money to fill it back up again, right? So at the end of the day, there's nothing there, right? At one point there was a big hole, but now it's filled back up with earth. So that person worked all day, but actually didn't produce anything. What Was there any value created from all that work? Well, let's see what happens in yeah, 10 years. I mean, you're you know, young people, young people right now do everything on the internet. Young people have grown up only on the internet. They've grown up purchasing skins in games like Fortnite. Yes. They're paying real dollars to buy Gucci and Louis Vuitton skins on Fortnite. Look, I understand so, that, but they're not living in digital houses. They're not eating digital food. Uh, there are certain things that you can't do on the internet. You need in real life. And, and, and money is, you know, you have to have actual, you know, they, they're saying that Bitcoin is digital gold. It doesn't work in no more than digital food, you know, or digital house. And, you know, and, and people are playing these games for entertainment. Uh, it is not, you know, hey, I'm going to get rich off of buying some product on, on a video game. So this is a collective delusion. This is, you know, you know, like, like tulip mania. I mean, you, you can look back. Right. And think, gee, I, I have a poster of tulip mania in our office. Right. And you I understand and look, where you're coming from. The people from. that were buying those tulips in Holland were as convinced as you are that they were going to get rich. You know, and I'm sure <laughs> look, there was. A, I'm not saying there must have been. We can definitely see another 2001 style crash in cryptocurrency. It's very possible. Are there a lot of scam coins out there? Yes. Is there a lot of risk out there? Absolutely. Yeah. Is there a lot of crap out there? Absolutely. Is there real value out there? Well, I guess let's let time decide. Yeah, I, I we'll think see they're all, really it's all crap, the right? They're all shit coins or whever you want to describe <laughs> them. They're, they're, there's no. When I, I, I laugh when I hear the Bitcoin people making fun of Dogecoin or Shibu Inu. You know, but you know, when you live in a crypto house, you can't throw stones because there are, it's all the same. Any criticism well, you have of those coins, you can make the exact same criticism about Bitcoin. If you enjoyed this short clip from my longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love. And while you're at it, if you're interested in learning more about how to start generating passive income, our team put together an amazing guide that goes over what passive income is, how to start generating passive income, and different passive income strategies. These are things that you can start doing even if you don't have a lot of money. So if you want to read this free guide on how to start generating passive income for free, all you got to do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching, and as always, keep hustling.